Welcome back to the moment we've all been waiting for. Frustrated? Take a walk. ODM leader Raila Odinga tells Deputy President William Druto, whose allies have lately increasingly claimed that the DP is being alienated from a government he helped form. In an exclusive interview with the Standard Group, the former Prime Minister speaks on why the next few months will be a flurry of activity around the BBI and why he thinks the judiciary is the weakest link in the fight against graft and an array of other national issues currently taking center stage. Here now is that interview with ODM leader and former Prime Minister Raila Amolo Odinga. Maybe just getting straight into it. Uh, the country is slowly reopening. Uh, we've seen um, the last address by the president. Um, he has reopened a few sectors and now we are seeing the schools reopen. A lot of enthusiasm around that and of course um, a lot of reaction, uh, positive or negative, around the reopening of schools. Uh, just generally, how you're looking at how we've gone about the reopening of the economy and schools and various aspects of our lives after six, seven months into the pandemic, do you think or are you confident that we are on the right track as a country? Thanks, Okisa. Uh, well, uh, one would have loved to have reopened yesterday. Um, as you know, we have been locked in for the last eight months. Uh, during this period, uh, many Kenyans have suffered. In that period, we have lost also quite a number of Kenyans. And uh, a lot of jobs have been lost. And. Um, Schools have been closed. Uh, children have been very idle at home. Uh, because of this, there's been a lot of domestic uh, tension. Uh, we've seen the rise in domestic violence uh, in, in this particular period. So it is just, uh, I mean, it's a welcome development that um, things are beginning to ease in. Uh, the pressure is actually relaxing. Um, life is slowly but surely oh, getting back to, to normal, normalcy. I would not say that we are yes, um, over the woods yet, but at least uh, there are signs that things are, are going to get better. And because of this, um, the government has done the right thing to remove some of the restrictions particularly the lockdown, um, so that more economic activities can take place. You can see that um, wealth creation is beginning to pick up. Uh, I'm sure more jobs are going to be created. How would you rate the government's um, response um, to COVID-19? Uh, so far, do you think they did a good job and where do you think the loopholes have been that we should be now thinking of strengthening as we go forward? I don't want to play the blame game in this thing because just, just like all countries in the world, no country was prepared. Nobody had a forewarning that this danger was coming and therefore everybody was reacting. Uh, when, when it, it broke out. So everybody was taken by surprise, not just our, our government. I would think that um, initially the response, like elsewhere, was a little bit slow, but immediately the government caught up and they were able to contain the, the epidemic. If you compare with other countries, not only on our continent, but in the world generally, I don't think that the government has performed poorly. Um, but it's also um, because of uh, the, the, our people, people of Kenya also, who followed instructions given by the government. That is also a contributory factor to what has been achieved. I could say on a scale of one to 10, I could give them seven. But even with this pandemic, among the things that have uh, bedeviled this government are corruption, allegations, um, theft of monies. Um, you have spoken on, on, on this issue before. You've called for a special audit, asked that we do not rush 
you know, to say that money was lost before an audit is conducted. But just the other day, the Auditor General uh, presented a report before the Senate um, and in confirming that 2.3 billion shillings has been lost during this pandemic period. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Of course, I'm saying that corruption must be condemned wherever it rears its ugly face. And that I'd say that, look, let us wait for a professional audit. Remember that time, we were talking of hundreds of billions which were lost. Uh, now you're telling me 2.7 billion. 2.3 billion, billion, according to the auditors general. Uh, I mean, yeah, well, look, just look at the newspapers. Go back into what was Even look at your own stories in, 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 in the electronic media. The kind of uh, billions you're talking about. Where are those billions? That was the Auditor General's see, report. It's, it's, uh, because I, that's why I said, don't condemn people unheard. And I said, wherever we spoke and we have been speaking, it was always after a professional audit. Uh, the Goldenberg, the Auditor General, produced a report. The Anglo Racing, Kroll, produced a report. Um, the uh, Grand Regency Hotel, there was a report of the Auditor General. The May's scandal, I appointed PricewaterhouseCoopers to carry out a professional audit, after which then I dismissed, uh, I, I suspended a minister. Um, so what I was asking for was not unusual, except that it was lost in the drown of you know, condemnations. But now that report is out, people have to answer. Uh, in my view is that uh, um, uh, some people have to face the music. Some people were involved in uh, uh, graft and uh, cause this loss because they have to, to, to pay for it. As official opposition leader um, and a leader of, um, with a very large following in the country, uh, there has been concern that perhaps your style has changed as far as um, dealing with corruption. Uh, many questions on where is the firm um, anti-corruption crusader pressure piling aggressive Raila Odinga when it comes to issues to do with corruption. Perhaps is it that the style has changed or is it the relationship we have with the government now? What is different from the past Raila Odinga who was a very firm crusader of corruption? anti-corruption rather? Nothing. Nothing has changed. What has changed is my communication with the government. That when I see things happening, I tell them straight away, do it this way, do it this way. Um, basically because we were in uh, uh, cooperation. But I don't shy away. I'm never silent when there is anything to do with corruption. I've always been steadfast, and, and that's the way I know how to do things. Uh, and and any times anybody has tried to smear my name with corruption, I've said that I'm, I'm as clean as, as uh, cotton wool. Uh, so I know uh, how the government operates. I've been a prime minister. See, when I was a prime minister, I was not criticizing the government. I was acting. Uh, directly uh, in government. So um, I, I never play politics with corruption. I speak out of facts. I have not changed. Sometimes my role changes, but I'm very consistent in as far as family dealing with corruption. So is that the same thing you will expect um, with this Kemsa scandal that whoever will be mentioned regardless of their position in government or political affiliation, that if they're in government, that they will step aside? Do you expect that? Certainly. Certainly. Nobody um, should be uh, 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 bigger than the, 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 the country. The country is much more important. But you can see, we're having a problem even with our own judiciary. You see, people are being taken to court but cases are tied in court. They are not moving. They, they go in there, and then they are knee out, they're given uh, bail, and then they're out, and the cases are not being heard for years and years. 
when witnesses, some of them have died, you know, so we have a, a problem with our judiciary. Uh, uh, I think that judiciary is um, actually an accomplish in, 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 in this war. Would you say the judiciary then is the weak link in our criminal justice system as far as fighting corruption is concerned? Because this is one of the biggest issues um, that President Uhuru Kenyatta has had to deal with in his administration, first and the second administration. Certainly, certainly because they are very quick to grant bail. The bail is a constitutional right. But then you never hear about the, the cases. What happened to Aror and, and Kimarer cases? You know, they just go cold, go cold. You start with uh, the, the the NYS scandal, uh, then you come to, with so many others. Uh, people are now used to it, see? Um, you got these land cases, land grabbing cases, they are never be, being heard uh, at all, you know. There's a lot of hula baloo in arresting, uh, running in court. But then once they've gone to court, they are tied in court. Nothing. You never hear any more about them <laughs> for for years. So, so um, I think right. we need to do a something. A lot of hula baloo, about, and um, many times have said that uh, perhaps the war on graft has looked cosmetic because of the drama they involved, and especially with the arrests. But also, the chief justice himself has uh, said that. In, in previous um, interviews that the judiciary really should not be blamed. He talks about half-baked cases being brought to courts and then their hands are tied. What are your thoughts, thoughts on that? I'm not a lawyer to go into details of, of, of those half-baked cases. Why then don't they hear them and dismiss them that the evidence was not there? But the thing is that at least the prosecution has carried out these investigations, has collected evidence, has brought evidence to court, hear them, then say that there's not sufficient evidence on the basis of this, we are dismissing the, the, the case. But they're not being heard. So how can they talk about how big cases? My concern is about this case of saying that um, if you're charged in court, you're still innocent until proved guilty, that you can just go back to your place and continue working. When we know that in the government, when somebody uh, has committed a, 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 an offence, um, this person is interdicted. If he is in, suspended or interdicted, uh, that person is not allowed to go back to his desk office to, to work until the matter is been uh, heard and dispensed with. That's when that fellow can either be dismissed or can be uh, returned back to work uh, with his full, full, full rights. Now, I see now the matter is in court. Uh, it's been saying that if somebody uh, is charged with a crime in court, he uh, should be allowed to continue working, hold, holding office. I, 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 that is a serious contradiction in my view, although the matter uh, is in court. But um, I'm just talking as a layman. Yeah. I, I, I think we are really going to find this country. All right, so you'd be a big supporter of um, stepping aside, not holding uh, the office or accessing the office until when you've been cleared? Even myself, I would step aside until my name is cleared. Remember when that major scandal happened, I told officers in my office, the Prime Minister, my permanent secretary, my chief of staff, to step aside until the investigations are completed. And that is the case. And when they were exonerated by the investigations, then they asked them to come back All right. and, and they reported back. OK. And when we speak about the reopening, it would appear we have also reopened political activity in the country. What's the plan now? Just the other day, you were speaking in a church in Kawangware. You said we should expect the BBI report very soon. Why has it taken this long? And how soon is soon? Well, um, in a church in Kawangware, you could see that we are keeping social distance. And, and we are all wearing masks. 
in the church. So we did not breach any uh, of the, the, the regulations which have been pronounced for the Ministry of, of Health. And I mentioned that um, BBI report uh, will be coming out soon. And soon is, is soon. I, I don't know <laughs> what, uh, how more specific it can be. Um, we will be receiving the report, me and President Uhuru Kenyatta. And once we receive it, um, we will um, release it, make it public. And uh, we will um, then uh, convene a meeting so that uh, the people can come and it can be explained to them so that they understand that this is not just about jobs for the boys as is being uh, propagated by the opponents. Because you can, you can see that we have got people who are opposing what they have not even read, what they have not even seen. So, so, so these are basically uh, people we know for themselves. I mean, we know them by, by their history, you know? They are basically anarchists. People who don't want any order in this country. And therefore, they will oppose anything that is proposed by people whom they think uh, they, they see as their enemies. But this document, I really want to plead with Kenyans. It is not for President Uhuru Kenyatta or for Rail Odinga. It's a document for the people of Kenya. And it, let it be released, and the people will be the, the judge themselves, whether it really addresses their concerns or it does not address the concerns of the people. So what happens when the people reject this document that is fashioned to be theirs? If the people reject it, they are, that's their democratic right. There's nothing, uh, I mean, we can do. We cannot force the people to accept it. So we will go back to status quo. That the people will have voted that they love the status quo. See, um, so uh, we, we, we will have no, no, no problem with that. Um, um, but my view is that a number of people will see that it addresses their concerns uh, and, and that uh, it, it is a document that solves some of the problems we've been having in this country for a very long time. So it is not only about a constitutional amendment. There are certain issues which have been uh, outstanding for a long time, which have been dealt with by some of the reports in the past, but have never been implemented. There may be a few issues, one or two, to require constitutional amendment. And those are the ones which will go uh, to the people uh, for determination. Um, uh, so it is not just about a prime minister, his deputies, and so on, no. Because you're at the center of this and you talk about uh, possible timelines, um, and I, I'd imagine when we talk about one or two amendments being thrown back to the people, this means a referendum. How soon, perhaps, would we be holding this referendum, bearing in mind we just have about two years to a general election? Well, uh, all I know is that um, for a constitutional uh, bill uh, to go through Parliament, requires at least 90 days uh, notice uh, be before it can be uh, taken for uh, uh, first reading in, in Parliament. So that is three months uh, for, from the day that it is, it is uh, published. So uh, after, thereafter, um, the rest and details for that then you can talk about a month thereafter or uh, two months. So we'll be talking in terms of maximum five months from the time we're talking. In a country that is slowly recovering um, from the effects of COVID-19, and you've mentioned that this perhaps would cost about two billion shillings. Uh, many are wondering, um, is this the most pressing issue currently? Yeah, that uh, people should hold their horses and look at the document once it is released. That was will determine whether it is really a priority or it is not a priority. 
See, when it's a priority, Kenyans will decide. Uh, but the, those people, you know, um, the prophet of doom, who say that this is not a priority. Their priority is to run around campaigning for 2022. You ask yourself, is that a priority for the country? You see, when this government made some promises to the people that they are going to do uh, once they were elected. And they have, for example, uh, a big four agenda. That's the, and they have two more years left to deliver on that big four agenda. But before, two years be, before, they are, some of them are busy campaigning, promising what they are going to do after two years. They're forgetting that this is now their eighth year in government. And at that time, they had made promises uh, that we are going to, to fulfill, that we are going to create millions of jobs to the youth, that we are going to um, uh, build study in uh, all the countries, counties, that they are going to be um, uh, industrial parks, which will give jobs to the youth. Uh, that um, the need, the, the, the going to bring laptops in all the schools uh, and health centers and all these other things. Now, uh, seven years down the road, they are bringing, they are giving those youth wheelbarrows. Uh, what happened to the jobs? And they are now being called hustlers that are going to be liberated uh, in the next regime. Yet they are in government right now. Why are they not doing it now? Why do you want to wait to do it uh, in, in another time? What has stopped you from delivering into your promises of 2013? Yeah. And this was a joint ticket uh, between the Deputy President and uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta. And I like that you bring up the issue of uh, job creation and the politics of tokenism, as uh, some have described it. Do you think the government has done enough in terms of uh, job creation? in this country and in fulfilling the promises that um, they made? I think that the, the short of what they could have achieved, um, but I, I can talk in terms of uh, what could have been achieved after the, the handshake. And, and I can see that there's discordant in the government. Uh, the left hand is pulling this way and the right hand is pulling this other way. And that itself is undermining uh, service delivery uh, to the people. I am not Jubilee, and therefore I don't want to answer for them. So what then uh, would be your views on DP Ruto's alienation from government? Do you think it's right? Taking into consideration that you've gone through this as well, um, uh, being a prime minister in the Grand Coalition government, what do you think about how the government in, is running right now with the DP uh, conspicuously looking very sidelined? I, 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 I'm not part of the Jubilee government. I don't know what you mean by being sidelined because uh, he is supposed to be an assistant to the president. He's, he's part of the the, the, the presidency. So, um, um, and, and if myself, I, I felt frustrated and, and, and sidelined, I would take a walk. You know, Jaramogi was a vice president, and when he found it untenable to stay in government, he, he, he resigned. He said, I cannot justify staying in this government and earning a salary and, and, and having nothing to do. Do you expect the deputy president to do the same? If I, it was me, mm -hmm. yeah, I, if, I, if I felt I was... I'm not saying it's being sidelined. I'm not saying it's being sidelined at all. Um, okay. I'm saying it's supposed to be a president assistant, but he's missing in action. Uh, and some people wonder why he's missing in action. I don't know where you get the impression that he's being sidelined. Uh, I don't know who is sidelining who. Um, what I've heard the president say is that he does not want early campaigns. And I also have said, me and the president, when we, we sat down, we agreed that they, we will not engage in the campaigns at all 
We don't want to mention 2022 until we be BBI is out, uh, until we have delivered on what we agreed on, which formed the basis okay. of the handshake. All right, all right. So are there plans to extend the handshake to the deputy president? But he's been very much part of it. Remember, when we launched, we received the first report and launched it, the Bombers of Kenya, he was there, there himself. Has all the times been consulted in what has been happening? So, so uh, what do you mean by being, being part of the handshake? Everybody has been involved, has been invited, you know. Remember, I also had my people uh, in NASA, and they've all been part of the, 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 the deal. They've been coming, they've been participating. Yeah. So if somebody chooses to isolate himself, he should not blame other people for that. Honorable Kalonzo Musioka and Musalia Mudavadi were very instrumental um, in your campaigns and even in the run up and afterwards, after 2017. What is the status of the NASA alliance right now? And they both say they will be running for presidency, going at it alone. What do you make of that? NASA was not a political party, NASA was a coalition between political parties. Uh, this kind of arrangement happened in a presidential system where political parties come together so that they can consolidate votes to win the presidency. Um, after the elections, if they win, they form a government, a coalition government, and uh, share power in accordance with the formula which has been put in the coalition agreement. Um, if, if they don't uh, win, uh, then, 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 then the, the coalition actually ends. In a parliamentary system, the political parties fight elections in, separately. And after the elections, if no party wins sufficient seats to form a government of its own, then this host ready, they negotiate uh, a coalition to get the numbers. And once they get the numbers, they form a government and they share positions in that government. Uh, in the run-up to the 2022 elections, the next two years left, what should we expect? What's the game plan for Mr. Odinga? I am involved in the BBI. And as I mentioned to you earlier, we agreed with we don't want to talk about 2022. We want to fix what went wrong in 20, 2017. This, this is our position. Okay? Thank you very much. It's getting dark. Uh, thank you for giving us this interview and speaking to us. We are very grateful. I'd like to end it there unless you have anything else to say. Thank you so much, Akisa. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.